In Jesus' name, amen. The opening verse. I ask then, has God rejected his people? You may know this story. A young teenager seeks out an instructor to learn methods of self-defense. The old man gives him tasks around his home. Painting fences, sanding floors, and waxing cars. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Very important. To the young boy it makes no sense. It seems that the old man is just taking advantage of him. Wax on, wax off, it makes no sense. Paul asks, has God rejected his people? Well, what's this all about? We said last week that Paul is writing to the church in Rome because uh, for a time the Jewish people had been expelled from Rome again, and uh, that meant that the church in Rome was basically only Gentile for a while. And as the emperor had died, a new emperor came in, the, the uh, expulsion order died with the, first, the previous emperor, and now Jewish people were be coming back to Rome. And Paul is concerned about their reception by the, the church in Rome. The question, has God rejected his people? Paul realizes that God's chosen people, the Jewish people, not all of them, but many had rejected God. Not all, but many of them had been involved in sending Jesus to the cross. They had rejected the Son of God, the Messiah, the one sent by God the Father. And when you reject the one sent by the Father, you're rejecting the Father himself. And Paul's preaching of the Gospel of Jesus attracted much hostility from parts of the Jewish communities in the cities where he had traveled on his mission journeys. Generally, some of the Jewish people in each of those cities were the first to believe Paul's message of the Christ. But others became adamant in their rejection of the Christ. Knowing that many of God's people had rejected God's message, Paul asks, has God rejected his people? And his quick answer is, by no means. Their rejection of God, some of them who had rejected God, had not changed God, had not changed God's love or God's promise. Paul himself is an example of that. God's love had come to Paul even though Paul at first disbelieved the message. God's love had come to Paul as the Holy Spirit in his case, suddenly worked faith in Paul's heart, Paul was proof that God had not rejected his people. Paul then says that the rejection of the gospel by many of the Jews led to the gospel ministry to the world, to the Gentiles. We know that the persecution of the church in Jerusalem, a persecution that to a great degree was led by Paul when he was an unbeliever, that persecution resulted in many believers leaving Jerusalem and scattering beyond Judea to other parts of the Mediterranean world. And as they scattered, they carried the message of Jesus Christ with them to their new neighbors in all those various countries. When Paul finally became a believer in Jesus, his ministry, his mission efforts, almost always began in the synagogue. At least everything recorded shows he starts there the Jewish places of worship in the cities to which he traveled. But his efforts always extended beyond the synagogue too. And Paul says he magnifies his ministry to the Gentiles. He hopes this ministry to the Gentiles will have some effect, even if it's a jealous effect, to draw more of the Jewish people to faith in Jesus. In fact, Paul makes it clear that this is the way God's word works. It works the same for everyone. All people, Jews and Gentiles alike, are imprisoned by disobedience, rejection of God. That's the way we all start. 
None are in a right relationship with God based on their bloodline nor their ability to keep God's law. No one can do it. All are imprisoned by their disobedience so that God's mercy is the only answer, the only way out. There's no difference. Jew or Gentile, all are equally condemned by the law. There is no difference. Gentile or Jew, all can be saved only, only by God's mercy through the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. And the good news is just that. Salvation is a gift through Jesus Christ, available to everyone, a gift of God's grace. But what about you? Have you ever felt rejected by God? Have you ever felt your, like your life isn't making sense? Have you ever had struggles that just seem to go on and on and on, unending? can't find the answers for what you're searching. Wondering, where is God right now? Does He care about what I'm going through? Well, please hear this. God has not rejected you. We can certainly reject God, but He never rejects us. All of us have been and still are disobedient of God's law. Mercy in Christ is our only hope. Where is God? Where is He when we're struggling and hurting and wondering? Where is God? He's right with us. Right in the middle of our struggles. When we hurt, He hurts with us. Consider the Canaanite woman we heard of today in the Gospel. Praying for Jesus' help for her child. He seems at first to ignore her and then to rebuff her, but she doesn't give up. It looks like he's rejecting her. Actually, he's putting her to the test, perhaps for her sake, maybe more so for the sake of his disciples. She continues praying for help, relying on God's mercy. She knew God's word from Isaiah 56 that we heard today, His promise is to love even foreigners. Even when it seemed that Jesus was unwilling to help, she trusted God's Word. She trusted that promise and she clung to God's mercy. And finally, Christ answered her prayer. In Psalm 67 we read, that God's grace and shining face is about His saving power for all. We believers who live in a New Testament time know that God's grace and shining face is Jesus Himself. Only He is the rescue for our prison of sin. God hasn't promised us an easy life. God has not promised us that we will understand everything that happens in our life. Do you remember his response to Job that we heard a few weeks ago? Where were you when I made all this? Do you understand how it all works? But what God has promised us is mercy. Love that we don't deserve. Salvation that is Jesus. And because of Jesus, God promised that we are never alone. When we go through the worst of our troubles, He is with us. We may not see it, we may not even feel it, but we can believe it, trust it, rely on it, because God keeps His Word. Remember the story we started out with? A young teenager seeking an instructor to learn methods of self-defense. That young teenager, by the way, was being bullied by others at school. The old man gives him tasks around his home. Painting fences, sanding floors, waxing cars, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. Very important, Daniel Sonic. To the young boy, at first, it made no sense. 
It seems that the old man is just taking advantage of him to get work done around his house. For a long while it didn't make sense to the boy, but in the long run, those repetitive motions strengthened his muscles and they taught him the basic movements for the self-defense he needed. Has God rejected his people? Never. When your life doesn't make sense, Stick with the things His Word tells you. He says, take up your cross and follow me. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I am with you always. He says, whoever believes in me will live forever. When life doesn't seem to make sense, stick to His Word. Eventually, we will see clearly that His Word of promise and love and forgiveness in Jesus Christ is all that we need. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in this Jesus Christ. Amen.